Right, so this lesson is going to seem a little more complex, but what we're trying to show here is how you would import an, an electronic bank statement or a file from the bank to automatically match your payments that customers have made to the bank with your customer open invoices. So this is a, an automated process that your company is most likely using versus the previous process we just showed where you manually post cash and match it. So in this example, though, we're going to specifically look at the lockbox method, which is the U.S. Uh, check electronic file from a bank. So although these transactions are specific to the US and you would use them for the lockbox, there will be similar procedures with slightly different transactions for other bank statement files in other countries. But remember, your own company will have its own specific method and process and different communications with a bank. So rather think of this lesson as the principles that are being applied rather than the exact steps that you would follow. So in this scenario, we're going to import a lockbox file for checks received at a bank, and we're going to display the imported data and then show the lockbox journal entries. So in this case, our, our lockbox number is uh, 222. And we have a different destination and origin, which links the, the lockbox to our company, and we're going to be using this um, bank account to represent the lockbox that's receiving the cash. So remember, this is just going to be a sample as we go through. Now, in terms of just summarizing um, that process, uh, whether this is a regular bank statement or specifically lockbox, in this lockbox example, what's happening is that customers are making payments to your bank. The bank itself is then compiling a data file that they can then submit to your company. And the main format being used um, today is this BAI2 file format. And there used to be a BAI1, but BAI2, the main difference is this carries separate line item detail to enable a higher automated matching rate and partial payments also to be applied. So from an SAP perspective, we then are going to import that file from the bank into SAP. And this is really its cash and remittance advices. SAP then applies an automated matching algorithm to match the payments uh, to open invoices in SAP. So it can use different things like document numbers, invoice reference numbers, amounts, etc., and automatically match where possible. When an automated match happens, the payment advice and the amounts are also automatically posted. If something isn't able to post, then there's a procedure here to actually do post processing and to do the matching yourself or to help with that matching. So during this post processing phase, when you originally import this file, if everything matches, they will be applied to the, the incoming payments from the file will be applied automatically to the invoices and you don't have to do anything. They'll be posted, matched and cleared. If something only partially matches, something could be partially applied. If something can identify the customer account number, but um, not any other information on the invoice, it's then called on account processing. And if something um, just can't be matched at all, it can't be applied. It'll really just sit, you know, unapplied or unprocessed. Now, in the test system here, because I don't have the, a real file from a bank to match to real invoices, what's going to happen is we are not going to get any automated matching. Nothing will be applied or partially applied automatically. So we will make more use of this post-processing phase to show how to handle items that don't match automatically. Because remember, in your own company scenario, most items you're expecting to match automatically, and you only need this process for items that don't match automatically. So let's uh, walk through that. So in terms of importing the lockbox file under financial accounting, under um, you know accounts receivable menus where we did the other transactions, but here we're going to go to the bank's menu and we're going to go to the input because we're receiving money in, not output. And we have a specific lockbox file area here, and this is the import, post, and post process. But in the import step, you can also post. So I've saved a variant here for my test. Then here, I've just got a test file that's actually on my PC that I'm going to upload into the, the bank storage file in SAP. And this is the, the name of that file. This would normally be automated uh, you know, in your company, but this is just a test process to show how it works. There's the BAI2 format. These are different algorithm matching items you can choose. And then essentially, when you've got the file there, you can just say execute and it'll actually import the file. Now, in our system here, we're getting a message saying that this uh, file already exists because I've already done the import. So it's showing you that, um, that there's nothing to process because it already exists in storage. So because this is a test system, it's harder to simulate a file. But I'm going to then just show you on the next screen what this output would look like from that file. So when that file is processed, you get a log. And on the import log, you'll see here in this example, there's a bunch of check numbers that have been posted. This is the account number that they're going to. In our example, this is not the right customer number, so we'll 
um, but in the test file, uh, we would correct that. These are the amounts that are posted, which are the amounts we're working with, and these are the various document numbers that the system has posted to record these payments coming in. And in the log here, you'll see, as I mentioned before, if there were amounts that were automatically applied or partially applied, they would appear in this box. In this, in this example here, they're showing that $20,000 was posted on account. In other words, it found the account number, but it wasn't able to actually match versus anything that was just unprocessed. So your import procedure may be different or it could be automated depending on your bank and IT infrastructure, but the principles will still be the same. So let's um, uh, go ahead and, and, and look at this. So once we've imported and posted whatever we can, I'm going to now look at this post-processing phase. Now, in this phase here, all you really need to do is um, use this transaction code and enter the lockbox number. And here you will see that these are the amounts that were then imported from the lockbox and uh, posted because the posting happened in the first initial step as well. And you'll see here I've got the amounts and I've got a document number and I've got a payment advice for these different amounts. And if I click down here, I can you know, see the different amounts that have been posted. But they're currently red because they haven't been matched to any account at all. And... Um, so what we're now going to do in order to post, um, there's this other display button which just helps you see the amounts are also broken down into various different check numbers so you can actually navigate quite a lot of detail. Currently these are unprocessed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that these land on our customer account. Because right now you'll see that these documents are sitting in um, the lockbox but they are unapplied to any AR account. So right now the system doesn't even know which customer these belong to. So I've done that association in the background to see how that works. And these are payments. So just think now they're sitting in the bank account, but they are unapplied in AR so far. That's the scenario we're in. But what you can then simply do with this transaction is we can go up to this um, top menu here and um, and actually go in and actually just click the post checks to apply this uh, transaction. So let's have a look and see what that looks like. So to post those lockbox entries, I could use the post transaction, or I can just go straight to this um, lockbox again. So let's go to the lockbox and run and run that uh, lockbox transaction again. As we just showed, these are the items um, that weren't matching. And now to now process this file to post, I can just click here on checks, and I can click this post function here. And the system is then now going to do some matching, and now you'll see the icons have changed blue, and we've actually had some payment advices posted. And that what we've done is we've now made this match to our custom account, the, the 171001. So on any one of these amounts now, we'll now see we've actually now got, taken these from unprocessed to payment on account. And I've done that association in the background just in the file just to make sure that it does land. But this is really what you would expect. And if I double click on one of those documents, you'll now see that we've now got a debit to the unapplied cash. And it's now actually landed on our customer account on the 171001. So we've taken it from unapplied to customer, but right now it's still not matched to any invoice, but at least we've taken it from AR unapplied and at least got it to the payments on account mode. So this, this would be one of your first steps. And you'll see that if I just do a, a sort and a filter here and subtotal it, you'll see that the, we had 7,600 in unapplied cash, and that's broken down to a number of, a number of separate checks on the customer account. So that's really what this, uh, posting step was doing and we used uh, the post processing here to take things from the original bank statement we imported the file we managed to get it to unapplied ar and get it in the lockbox but the system didn't know what account it was i did a bit of editing in the background on the file just to make sure that the file knew what custom account was so we could then go reprocess and post and instead of using the separate transaction i just used post processing and then now the amounts have landed on the account, which is a more realistic uh, scenario that you would be encountering. So this to summarize that again, the important post was the first step. In this case, it was unapplied to customer, so it landed on AR unapplied and was a debit to lockbox because our test file didn't have any uh, custom information in it. Then. Um, by then me messing with the file in the background because it's a test file to associate a customer number, I was able to post process again. And then the system could automatically, when I just click that checks and post transaction, was then able to move it from the unapplied to the customer account. And we'll now take a subsequent uh, lesson where we'll see how to actually then match those two invoices. So that's just the basic outline of importing a file and 
doing some post-processing if you are not getting any automated matches. But a high automated match rate is what the goal is for this process for your company. So this would be exception processing that I'm just showing. So you will recall from the previous lesson that when we imported the lockbox file and then got it to post, initially unapplied AR, then we actually got the amounts posted and applied to um, our customer number, the 171001 customer. The, although the payments were posted and they were now on account with a the customer, they weren't actually matching any invoices. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use this um, manual matching process, the F-32 that you learned about in an earlier lesson, to be able to do that matching. So as we discussed, the file's been imported and the payments cannot be auto-matched. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the manual matching process. We're going to find a single open invoice for $6,000 and we're going to match it with four payments, i.e. four separate checks that came from the bank lockbox. So let's have a look at that. So if you remember the um, account transaction uh, for displaying line items, and then we've got the clearing transactions. So let's first look at the line items so we can see what we're trying to clear. So put in our customer account, click open items and execute. And if we look here, we'll see under the document type where we've got our various um, documents. We've got the, um, you know, the DR uh, documents, manual invoices. We've got the RVs, automated invoices. And then you'll see we've got uh, what we've then created, all these um, DZs. These are all the payments that came from the lockbox. I'll just highlight this. So this is everything that automatically got posted from the lockbox to the customer account from the previous lesson. So they're all showing as open items because they haven't been matched to individual invoices. If I double click on one of those payments and just go to the overview, you'll see here where we've got the, the AR and the unapplied checks and um, the uh, customer account. So that's really where we're sitting at the moment. So that's just to give you an idea of what we're looking at where, because there wasn't a match, but the payments are sitting on the account. So let's now have a look at how we can then actually clear and match those using F-32. It's a fairly simple procedure. Just select the customer number, click process open items. And now as we scroll down here, remember this shows what's in the open item list. Let's find some of those DZ documents, which we know were the payments. And what we're going to do is we can double click on each one we want to select. So here we've selected 1200. Now we've got 1400 Let's just keep adding on. Select four invoices for a total of $6,000. So now that we've got $6,000 worth of DZs or payments, we can then find an invoice for $6,000 that we can match. So now we go down the list here. I found an invoice for $6,000, which was the DR and manual invoice. So I'm just going to double click that line. So now we've assign that too. So now the assignments are all matching, but there's a zero balance overall. We've got the 6,000 invoice. We've got our four payments and now simply click the post button uh, to post that document. And then this will then match those open items for us. So once that um, processes, we'll then uh, get a document number and then we can then go and display the open items and then see what that um, uh, looks like on the customer open item list. Just remember, when you do this, then the DZs will then become cleared and you won't keep on seeing a list of open items. So here the document is posted. So now I'm simply going to go back one to the main menu. And if I'm going to display customer line items again and into the customer number, and I'm going to run this for open items, you'll see that a lot of those DZs have now disappeared. There are still some payments that haven't been applied yet, but the ones that we chose, the four of them were cleared. To see that, if we choose all items and execute that, we'll then scroll down here into the green section or the cleared items, and we can then clearly see where the uh, DZ documents, the four of them, or the four payments from the lockbox that we picked, have now been matched to this DR invoice or the 6,000. So all of those items now are matched and cleared. Now we can just go back to the main menu. So it's a fairly simple procedure then to do that uh, manual matching to clean up that customer account. So that's the end of that lesson. Now, just some comments about the bank account flow. Uh, different companies have different procedures, so it's going to be very specific to your company on how many bank accounts you have, how many clearing accounts you have, and how many final bank accounts you have. So you might have a lockbox clearing account, a final account, and you might have processes where you're transferring uh, amounts between bank accounts, like some kind of cash sweeping process. So we're not covering all of those variants in this lesson because it's so specific to every company, but just be aware that these variants do exist. The principles are the same though, so you need to speak to your internal treasury or AR department to find out what your specific procedures are. 
And again, although the lockbox process is specific to the US and it's around check payments, the principles behind getting electronic payments from a bank statement or from a lockbox are the same, and SAP does have transactions to support those processes. And all the matching and clearing processes are the same regardless of, um, of, how, the, um, of how the data got imported from the bank. Congratulations on completing the Accounts Receivable Bootcamp. So you have now learned how to enter different types of accounts receivable invoice in SAP, manual invoices or automated invoices from sales billing documents. You've learned how to enter manual cash receipts and match them to open items. You've also learned how to process an automated lockbox receipt in SAP, i.e. an electronic file from the bank for customer payments. You've also learned how to review and audit posted invoices and open items and basic accounts receivable reporting of balances, line items, and the age analysis report. So for next steps, you need to practice the various methods learned so that you can get familiar and more familiar with the transactions and the techniques. And you can experiment with more complex invoices and also working with actual bank files from your company. And take the time to research within your finance or your treasury departments regarding how different bank accounts are used and the flow between the different bank accounts and also the different file formats that you are using so you can apply your knowledge. And remember to review the appendix section as I have a quick reference guide there of all the transactions covered in this course. So let's just check that out quickly. So in the appendix is a quick reference guide and it's attached as a PDF, which you'll find at the end of the lesson. And this is what the PDF looks like, just um, so you can go and download it. We've um, put the transactions in for the manual or the non-sales order invoices, the automated uh, billing from sales orders, the reporting section, manual payments and clearing, and then the lockbox processing. And I've just added a note here that for uh, if you want to create any test lockbox sample files for yourself, there's a program here you can use with SE38 transaction code to create that. And just remember, you can also reference this flow just to get an idea of what's actually happening between the customers making payments, the bank compiling a file, the BAI2 format, and then that importation into the system. SAP matches and automatically posts if it can find the matches, which is what you should expect. And then at the end of the day, there was this matching process, this manual matching process that we had to do um, in this account. So just remember to keep that flow in context for your learning. Thanks very much for taking the course.